नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स एनालिसिस सो वॉट विल वी डू टूडे इज टू लुक एट द अदर पार्ट ऑफ द एनालिसिस विच इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन एनालिसिस टू सी वॉट हैपन टू द सिस्टम और वी कैन से हाउ द सिस्टम रिस्पॉन्ड टू द इनपुट ऑफ द डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसीज ओके सो लेट एस डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन बिफोर वी एक्चुअली गो टू मोर डीपर डीपर एनालिसिस इन दिस चैप्टर ओके सो आई स्टार्ट विथ एज यूजल सिस्टम विच अ लीनियर टाइम इनवेरियन सिस्टम राइट सो द फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ द सिस्टम इज द स्टडी स्टेट नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ अ सिस्टम इज डिफाइंड एज द स्टडी स्टेट रिस्पॉन्स सो दिस शुड बी अंडरलाइन स्टडी स्टेट रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ द सिस्टम टू अ साइनोसोडियल इनपुट सिग्नल ओके सो द रीजन वाई वी स्टडी द काइंड ऑफ साइनोसोडियल आउटपुट इज इफ आई गिव पास अ सिग्नल थ्रू द एल टी आई सिस्टम एंड इफ दिस सिग्नल इज अ साइनोसोडियल सिग्नल सो द आउटपुट इज ऑल्सो अफकोर्स द साइनोसोड ओके सो वॉट विल चेंज इट इज द मैग्नीट्यूड सो इनिशियली द मैग्नीट्यूड वॉज ए now the magnitude is b and also a bit of phase shift depending on what is sitting inside the system right so we will exactly characterize uh, how the b will change uh, based on what is sitting inside here and similarly how the phi will change uh, is based on again what is sitting inside here okay so we will discuss in this lecture so why do we need all these types of analysis so let us some you know, advantages of frequency uh, domain analysis are listed here so most of this analysis or what we call also as the frequency response is independent in a way of amplitude and phase of the input taste signal right so we will see why that is true and when i go to design a certain system so the design and parameter adjustment of the closed loop can be carried out equally or rather easily in frequency domain than in time domain signal so okay so far we haven't look at the design problem but this will be obviously when we start handling the design problem in the next incoming lectures okay so we also saw that the effect of noise and disturbance in terms of frequency right so when we talking about the sensitivity and the complementary sensitivity function we classify the disturbance as low frequency signal and noise as a high frequency signal now we will see how we can actually kill the effect of noise in a certain setting so the effect of noise and disturbance parameter can be easily visualized and then of course there is always a correlation between the time domain signal and the frequency domain specification which we will derive very shortly okay so given you know a certain performance specification in time domain i actually even translate it into a frequency domain and another thing uh, what i could also do is if i would know how to find the transfer function of the system will look like i can just give certain signals of varying frequency based on those frequency response i can easily estimate what is the transfer function of the system okay you may also say well why not just look at the step response of the system and get the transfer function because step response includes the value of zeta it also includes the value of omega n okay i could measure the peak value or we can say the peak overshoot i could measure the rise time the settling time the bunch of other things based on this things i could get the transfer function then what is the problem well one drawback over there is we just analyzed the second order system right so sometimes it might be little difficult even in those things what if the system is overdamped what if the system is uh, how do i find out the critically damped or it is not there could be some difficulties right in just looking at the step response and the looking at then estimating the transfer function based on the frequency response analysis or just looking how the frequency how the system magnitudes and phase i am using these terms without defining them but it will be clear in next couple of slides okay so how the magnitude and phase of the system changes with different frequencies and i just do a plot of that 
I can get a very good estimate of how the transfer function will look like. Not only that, I could even look at what could be the error constant. Okay, so uh, we will see that slowly as we progress through the remaining of this module. As a simple example, let us start with the LTI system that we are discussing here. So where I have a usual thing as a system, some transfer function C of S and I have an input signal which is a sinusoid in this form and I will just be interested in how my output y of t changes okay so the steady state response of a stable well uh, this guy is very important right so if the system is unstable then I don't really need to do any kind of analysis okay so it is very clear if I apply the signal that is the sinusoidal signal to any kind of system that is a sin omega t and at the output I will get b sin omega t plus y where the magnitude is changes and at the same time phase shift also changes okay so again I am using the magnitude and phase shift but that is not uh, already we have studied so let me just give you some some of the tools that we are going to use for frequency response analysis okay so let me just list some of these tools the first is polar plot so we are going to study polar plot we are going to study the Nyquist plot and also the Bode plot okay so this three plot or we can say the tool we are going to study in our control system engineering okay there are other many tools uh, which we can use for the design of our system for analyzing the system analyzing the behavior of the system but this three will be in our syllabus okay so a sinusoidal transfer function that is so if uh, g of s, s is there and if you replace s is equal to j omega in a complex function you can represent g of j omega when s is equal to j omega is nothing but the real part of c j omega plus imaginary part of g j omega okay so you can represent your transfer function in the form of your in real and imaginary part same way if i am interested to find out the magnitude of this uh, this transfer function and also the phase angle i can simplify that magnitude of g j omega at an angle g j omega okay and let's say this magnitude is nothing but capital m and angle is nothing but phi okay so there is two way to simplify our transfer function first way is right here and second way is m at an angle alpha or phi okay where m is nothing but magnitude so if i am interested to find out the magnitude of this term this is nothing but the square root of uh, square of real part plus square of imaginary part and how we can find the value of phi that is nothing but tan inverse imaginary part of g j omega plus real part of g j omega okay so the graphical representation of frequency response can be utilized by and this both of this equation so whatever the equation you are using you can easily find with the help of any of them okay so this is it for today's lecture uh, when we meet in next lecture we are going to discuss how we can draw the polar plot and we are going to solve some of the examples of polar plot now this point is very important so in, for the examination uh, there will be uh, two to three questions based on polar plot nyquist plot and body plot for sure okay so this is all about today's lecture in next lecture polar plot will be there thank you so much